on another rescue mission. Hi, sometimes I get requests to help animals in other countries. Usually these are really complex cases that local organizations can't or won't, won't help. Usually we do our best to find a solution for those animals locally or to help them from the distance. But at times there is no other solution than to jump on a plane and go rescue the animal. This is one of those cases. I got a video request for help for a dog in Greece. Look at his feet, look at his paws at his legs. His name, Richard. Good morning, Sergio. Buenos dias. We're going on another rescue mission. We're going back to Greece. Last time when we went to rescue Hachiko, they were complaining that we didn't follow the exact legal procedure that uh, you have to follow in Greece to take an animal out. So this time we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna do it step by step. To get a dog out of uh, Greece, you have to apply for special permission at the mayor's office. So we'll be meeting the mayor. But the thing is that we promise you, a dog will be safe on the street. Please, we are back. We're coming for another dog. So we have arrived to Athens. It's now 6.30. Uh, we're gonna go to the Airbnb where we're gonna spend the night and uh, our friend Vali Orfanidou from the Orphan Pet is gonna join us there. We're gonna set up the plan for tomorrow and it's gonna be another very long day of driving. Can't wait to see Valia. She was essential on Last Rescue in Greece and she has become a dear friend of ours. Estamos en la calle más estrecha de, de Atenas. This is the narrowest street in Athens. And we have the biggest car. Good morning in Athens. 7.30. We are leaving the city. We are going, uh, I don't know where, uh, to rescue this poor doggy. It's going to be a really busy day. Let's see how it goes. We are in northern Greece, in the region of Cardizia, and we came here because uh, Valia here uh, sent me this video of this, uh, this dog in a shelter. The name of the dog is Richard, and Richard was on the floor, crawling, with his elbows rubbing the floor, and his face was so sad. Wow, oh, poor baby. So, so we are in a position to change the life of this dog. This dog is in a shelter in a very bad region, facing lots of problems. We're gonna take him to our hospital and we're gonna fix those legs. I don't know what it is that we're gonna have to do exactly, but uh, we're gonna fix that, that's for sure. We have decided that we are always gonna come back to Greece. We are always gonna come back and get dogs up. <laughs> if you don't like us to take dogs from Greece, tough luck because we're never gonna stop. Yes. <laughs> what do you think 
these people need to run a shelter properly? First of all, I think it's, it, not anybody can do that. It's very difficult that you go crazy and that you lose it and you become over emotional and overwhelmed and over anything. So I think they need to be a bit hardened in the good way so that they can face all those cases that they take in every day. Running a shelter with so many dogs is very, very costly and people don't understand it, but it takes a lot of money even just to feed the dogs. So they need very good promotion and they need to present their, their work as better as they can every day. Plus these dogs, they need to go homes. They need to go to homes. I mean, these shelters shouldn't be big storage places for no. dogs. I think unless they're rescued, no. I think unless the rescuers have any, you know, hoarding issues, which the ones I know, they of course they don't. The best thing you want, you know, is to empty spaces so that you can rescue more dogs. Otherwise, it's pointless. Some people can take, you know, nice photos and make a short video. Some people can't. Not everybody has those skills and not everybody has, you know, the proper volunteers that can do stuff like that. Are you seeing many volunteers coming to big shelters? Where do they come from? What countries? Have you met any of them? It's very difficult to get Greek volunteers in any shelter that is not in Athens. And then you get foreign volunteers if the shelter allows it and if it, it helps and if it's organized, for example, in that way, you can get volunteers from all over the world. People would really like to come and volunteer and spend you know, a month in a shelter cleaning the kennels and spending time with the dogs, which is very nice. Also, I think the advantage that Greece has that it's a very touristic country. So if somebody comes and volunteers in a shelter, then at the same time they are doing you know, social tourism in a way. Then it becomes very interesting. You change your perspective a lot because the shelters are not you know, there for the tourists to see. They're up on the mountains or in the middle of nowhere and then you get a different type of reality than the one you see as a tourist. Volunteers of the world just come to Greece. It's nice to be in the beach, it's nice to see museums, but come help us with the dogs. You know what, someone needs to be there and organize all the volunteers. So if you just get one person or two people who need to wake up, clean the kettles, feed the dogs, medicate the dogs. And the shelters are in the middle of nowhere. So unless they can offer accommodation, in the shelter yeah. and have a car to go there because they're not on walking distance someone needs to drive them yeah. so there's all those technical problems that really don't help taking volunteers that come from abroad or that seasonal volunteers that's yeah. a problem things that little by little will have to be sorted out but i really think that what these shelters need is a bigger online presence actually i think people get to think that there is only one or two shelters in the whole country. Oh, that's true, and there are so many. <coughs> Too many for such a small country, I think. Really? Actually. Sometimes in Spain, people write to me and tell me, well, we, we are a small rescue, we are in this village, in this village, we are on our own, we have no help from the government. I mean, expecting money from the government is a big problem for these uh, organizations, because they always live in an expectation that government is going to come help them, and it's not. Exactly. In Greece, no government can send money directly to any organization. There is some money that can be spent, but it's, it, it, it never goes to the, to the charity. But it's a trap, the government, it's a trap. you know, it's a trap. because if you ask too much, yeah. then you then, leave the control of the animals that you love of course. to the government, of to course. politicians, to some, you know, civil servants that have absolutely no care for animals. In Spain, our relation with the government is uh, zero. Yeah. We don't owe anything to the government. Everything we do is uh, thanks to our friends. I think that's the best approach in this case. We are back again in the middle of rural Greece. There's nothing here. We love to get into trouble, right? Think about it. What better thing to do today than coming to Greece and rescue this poor region? 95% of our work happens in Spain. Really? Yeah. And we do so much. But every once in a while, come on, you know, the world is a big place. There are problems everywhere and there, is, there are good people and animals everywhere that need our help. Open up. The world is a big place. And it's beautiful. And it's full of good people. 
We all need each other's help. We do. We have to be united. Welcome. <laughs> After you put your signature here. If not the signature here, it's not your dog. Isn't this the most official thing you have ever done? This is about <laughs> the most official thing. This is the first legal paper I've signed in my entire life. We met Hermione. She's so nice, so nice. And apparently she does so much work on her own. We're already very impressed. We are now arriving to, to their shelter. I honestly don't know what to expect. I think it's gonna be shocking, in a way. These people, they work really hard. I'm sure they're doing something nice. Setters, hay un montón de, de setters, perros, perros de caza. When they don't uh, need anymore their animal, they just throw it away. They don't care the future of it. The hunters. So, the hunters. So we have to step in and save the animal. And we ended up with uh, 11 setters at the moment. 11 setters. Yes. So how many you have right now? Hunters, perros, tres. At the moment we have about 120. 120. Yeah. Do you, do you find families for many of them? We are everyone? trying our best, but it's not easy. We only a few families per year. A few? A few. Okay. And how long has the shelter been open? ¿Cuántos años lleva el refugio? We help animals about 10 years. 10 years. We were in different areas. In this area, we were about five, six years. Okay. As you can see, we don't have a proper building. Yeah. But we are trying our so best. So what happens when it rains? We are exposed to the weather circumstances. So you made all these houses yourself? Yes, yes. La, las has hecho tú? With volunteers, yes. Wow. All by ourselves. We didn't have the money to buy many dog houses. This material was cheaper for us. But so looks, it looks good. Está muy bien. We try our best. <laughs> She's an elderly dog. Mira que cosa más bonita, mira que cosa más bonita. Ay. Dogs and humans, los perros y las personas somos iguales. ¿A quién no le gusta esto? ¿A quién no le gusta esto? Every day we receive several phone calls and we're trying to, to help as many as we can. It's not possible to save them all, but we are trying to save as many as we can. A lot of flies here.
by day with much love and treatment, he became the dog we see today. He's still on with us, he had no offer so far, but we never lose hope. He's a gorgeous boy, isn't Thank he? You. <laughs> so he He came under our care a couple of months ago. The vet told us that he has a, a problem to both front legs and he needs a, an expensive surgery and we are unable to, to do it. So this is the baby that we came to rescue. And this is the baby that we're gonna fix. His legs are useless right now. But we can fix that. Could you help us? Help us save Richard. One year from now, okay? One year from today, we'll be back to Greece and we'll see how she's doing. Thank you. Thank you.
Así. Nosotros creíamos que era porque el hueso estaba de forma hacia adentro, eh, que es una patología que se llama cierre prematuro de la fisión del hueso. Pero eh, no, las radiografías no justifican tal deformidad. Entonces ya pasamos al síndrome de la axitud carpal, en este caso una hiperflexión carpal. El motivo es una contractura del tendón carpocubital. Las rehabilitaciones, el posicionamiento correcto en tandas de 10 segundos con descanso de un par de segundos entre ellas. Se coloca, contamos 10. Y descansamos dos. Y ahora Ico lo que hará es hacerle niveles de calcio, de fósforo y, y otros electrolitos para ver que vaya todo bien, ya que esta enfermedad no se conoce la causa, pero muchas veces se achaca a, a dietas deficientes. Si con rehabilitación no va bien en una semana o dos semanas, lo que se hace es una tenotomía. Mira, si tocas aquí, ves que el tendón está duro como una piedra. Hay que rehabilitar. Here is Richard. Since we went to pick him up in Greece, he's been at the hospital. We've done all kinds of tests because his condition is quite, quite, quite complicated to fix. Initially, our vets thought that it was only a matter of tendons. They thought that uh, maybe we even, even with uh, physiotherapy only we'll would be able to fix it. But they soon realized that uh, it's more complicated than that. So. We're gonna have to realign entirely the leg. Not only the wrist, but also the curvature of this bone. There will be two incisions and there will be a realineation. It's quite complicated. So to do this, we're gonna have one of the best trauma surgeons in the country. It's going to come, uh, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be joining our team here. And we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that it's done perfectly. It's gonna come from Sevilla. In the meantime, well, Richard is doing fine. He's very happy. He loves everybody. He loves every person and every animal he has met. And everyone loves him. Uh, we are still in the process of uh, finding a family for him. Uh, I've made a few calls, doing some conversations with some people, and, uh, but nothing has been decided so far. It's very it's up in the air. In the end, I guess it's gonna depend on you know, how the surgery goes and, and how he does at the end. But he's really wonderful. He's a really, really, really great doggy. And he's gonna be very lucky. I'm sure he's gonna have a wonderful home. Okay, so, Richard, don't look so scared. He looks scared, but he's not. <laughs> Richard, you're, you're a shameless, He's a wonderful dog. He's doing well. I think the surgery is gonna be next week. We're gonna put together the team and we're gonna go. We're gonna start with one of the legs, the right one, and then a couple of weeks later, we'll go for the left, left leg. Let's see how it goes.
En el caso de Richard, pues ha sido evaluado ya por varios compañeros de especialidad en traumatología y ortopedia. Es un caso también muy delicado por una deformidad bilateral de las dos extremidades anteriores. Es un paciente también eh, muy particular y estamos intentando valorar las diferentes opciones mientras preparamos a Richard para una serie de operaciones que pueden tener complicaciones y que son cirugías pues, altamente complejas y y la verdad pues es que queremos hacerlo bien, queremos elegir la mejor opción, tenemos mucha experiencia en situaciones de este tipo y queremos hacer las cosas en su momento y por eso estamos preparando a Richard a la mejor opción posible, así que os pido un poquito de paciencia, va a ser un camino tedioso, no va a ser nada fácil y por supuesto pues no lo vamos a poder hacer sin vuestra ayuda.
So my first video after that break that I took is gonna be with uh, with look at him, look who's here, <laughs> Valia. Hola. Valia came yesterday on a rescue mission. She came to bring a dog from Greece to a Spanish family. Olympia. And uh, Olympia. Wait, don't you? 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 So she came from Greece. She came to to deliver Olympia to her family. And uh, she's gonna be here with us for a couple of days or three days. So how long are you gonna be here? Three days. Three days. They, they uh, spending time with us, seeing what we do. Uh, so now we're gonna go to the White House, and then we're gonna go to the hospital. I want her to see our Greek dogs, Greek dogs. Polo, Richard. So yeah. So let's uh, let's have a let's have a good day in Spain with Valia, the orphan pet. <laughs> anyway, so now we're gonna go to the hospital because. Uh, Valia has to meet her Greek friends. It's the first time that she visits Spain and our hospital and she's gonna see that there's so many things that are different to, to, the, to the Greek clinics that uh, she normally uses. And yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Let, let's go. So guys, look, this is a beautiful reunion. I'm so glad that it happened. We've had all kinds of problems with these two dogs. They're both healthy now. They're both ready to be operated. But we've had health issues, technical issues, vet issues, financial issues, unbelievable. At no point, the dogs have been neglected. They've had great lives here. They are loved. They are super healthy. Richard's leg is fixed. There's one more surgery to go. Apollo's uh, implant is gonna be placed shortly. Today we met with the surgeon, Jorge, who gave us a brief of what's going on. The, the piece is actually coming from South America at the moment. It's on the post. And Apollo is doing great, but we've had so many issues. We just had to wait a little bit more. In the meantime, glad Valia is here. We're gonna show her the hospital now. And uh, she's so happy to see Apollo. <laughs> and Rich. She's ha and Richard. And Richard. Richard doesn't wanna look at Valia. I don't know why. <laughs> Richard, where are the mustaches, Sue? Ah. Richard rescued also in Greece the day we rescued him. I honestly looked at him and I thought, I wonder if we're gonna be able to do something. And guess what? We did it. Here is Richard.
Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but feeling Just loving this moment Can we stay here forever?
Mitch's transformation was beautiful. From a dog crawling on the floor, trying to compete against so many dogs at that shelter, into a completely transformed dog, having a wonderful life with a great family in Germany. That's what we do. We turn animals around. We save lives. Thank you very much for your help. And don't forget that everything we do is only possible if we have your support. Please, if you can, donate. Help us continue saving lives. Please, if you can, just join me on my support group on Patreon. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow.